Yes, you're very welcome along. It's Ashley O'Reilly here with you for the Women's Six Nations show here on Off The Ball. Unfortunately, Ireland have started the campaign with two losses, home to Wales and away to France last weekend. But they will be hoping to right some of those wrongs this weekend as they host Italy on Sunday in Musgrave Park in Cork. That game kicks off at 5pm. Delighted to say that I'm joined by two former Ireland internationals, Fiona Hayes, coming live from Cork. How's things, Fiona? I'm good, Ashley. No, it's good down in Cork. No rain, so flying it. Happy days. And Brian O'Driscoll is live here in studio. How's it going, Brian? Good, no rain in studio too, <laughs> so all going we're well. We're lucky, we're lucky. <laughs> good stuff. And Brian, just to kick off, you actually went in and spoke to the girls ahead of the Six Nations campaign. What was it like meeting them all? And can you let us in on some of those words of wisdom that you might have given them? Yeah, um, it was obviously, um, it was... Um, a big honour for me to get to do it. I, um, I've known Greg McWilliams for a long time. We played against each other back in college days um, and we'd always kind of been in contact. I, I met him in America a few, a few years ago when he was still over kind of applying his trade over there. And then when he came back in, we'd, um, we met in the airport, I think it was, over to Dubai. And, um, and anyway, he, he kind of got on to me. I think I started, we just started following each other on social media and kind of just catching up that way. And then, um, and then he, yeah, he just shot me a text that week and said, would you, would you come in and present the jerseys of the girls? And I said, I'd be, I'd be delighted to. Um, and I brought my little, uh, my daughter with me, my, oh, um, wow. my nine year old Sadie. Um, so just to get for her to understand and to get get a sense, you know, I've been to a couple of games with, with Billy, my eldest boy. But so it's really important, you know, we it hasn't materialised that I've managed to bring her to a, a women's hockey game, an international hockey game, which is her thing. Okay. And um, so I said, come on with me to this, and you were joking in the car on the way in, saying I was like, have you got your speech ready as well? I'll speak <laughs> first, and then you speak. And so, <laughs> face dropped. Oh no, pleasure. <laughs> Don't do that to me, Dad. Um, it was great. It was great. There was a really good energy in the place. It felt like new beginnings. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they were very enthusiastic. I think very excited about the prospect of what was coming. Um, I'd had a, I had a little chat with Greg and, you know, it's funny, there was a little bit of nervousness around the size of our front row comparatively to the Welch and which came to pass, you know, it, mm -hmm. it was a 20 kilo differential between all three of them. And, it, you know, at, at any level, it's just very hard to deal with that level of size, which unfortunately we kind of succumbed to a couple of mall tries and just that power game in the second half was our undoing, having having lots of green sheet, uh, shoots in the, in, the, in the first half. So um, it was great to be in there and yeah, spoke for a few minutes and then we got some pictures and... Um, yeah, there was, you know, Nicola Friday came up and she had her few words and got a little bit of emotion, a little bit emotional, which I hope she doesn't mind me saying, which was great. And mm -hmm. I think just there's been so much baggage that has come with this team. And I said those that were there, um, you know, have are the reason that they're back in the room is because they're not happy with what's gone before. Exactly. And that... Um, it's time to change it. And, you know, what's happened has happened and now it's time to move forward progressively with the IRFU, with themselves as a squad, building good culture, having fun again, enjoying it, looking forward to it. And um, and that's why you play rugby is to have a good time. If you're not having a good time, you shouldn't be there. And, you know, you're you're picked for international rugby because you've done something to warrant doing that. You don't change then your way, your style or, you know, your demeanour because mm -hmm. you're pulling on a different jersey, a, a bigger jersey, you do exactly what you did to have you selected for that team. So I just said all of that and to go out and, and express yourselves and have fun. And I thought they did that in um, certainly in the first half. I, it just got, it became that str stranglehold that Wales got the better of them in the second yeah. half. And unfortunately they couldn't hang on even for a losing bonus. But it's going to be a process, as Greg has said. It's going to take time to bed in and new players to break through. And um, I think we're all behind them. And I think we... You know, as as analysts, we have to critique them when it's not gone well, and mm -hmm. because I think they want that too. Of course, yeah, absolutely. You know, it's not, yeah. you know, softly, softly. We've got to constructive criticism is going to help, mm -hmm. and areas where you think they could be better, where they need to focus on, they need to improve, and and they'll know a lot of it themselves. 
Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think, as you said, it is new beginnings. It is a process. And I think just with you, someone of your calibre going in and speaking to them, you could really see it online, what it meant to them. Um, as you said, Nicola Friday was a bit emotional as well. And just the posts that they put up, you know, we could really see what it meant to them. And Fiona, for you, um, when you're playing international rugby, is there anyone that springs to mind that might have came in and spoke to the squad that really left an impact? Yeah, I think uh, 2013, not to be banging on about the same year, but um, there was actually two different jersey presentations that was that were massive for the squad. It hadn't really been something I'd kind of uh, uh, had before. You know, I played with Munster, but it, it, it just hadn't taken place. 2013 was my first year. And uh, for the first game, um, we had Katie Taylor, or the first home game, Katie Taylor came in to, to give out the jerseys. Um, I think Jenny Murphy had played soccer with her at the time um, or previous to that. So she had that contact and everyone was in absolute awe when she came in. And obviously everyone practiced in their, their boxer stance for the pictures you know so it was it was brilliant it was just um you know her words and you know she's very soft spoken and we, we know what she can do in the ring but she's very kind of calm in and I suppose that was a kind of a big year for for women's rugby and we I think we'd won a game maybe before it so it, it was we knew we were building something and then something huge happened then right before the France game um fair play to the manager Gemma Crowley she got on and I think she organized lots of past players from the women's team down from all the years um no one knew anything and we went to get our jerseys and a big load of them came in we'd sarah jane belton you know fiona steve grania Colin, all these people that um were big influence in women's rugby and and brian talked about emotion and that was quite emotional as well because they'd gone through a lot with it and to see how we were being treated this year you know how women's rugby had progressed it, it, it was just really something beautiful yeah, I think those sort of things help, you know, when you're a squad, especially this team now at the moment, as they're rebuilding, to have someone come in like Brian um, and really motivate them and push them on. As we said at the top of the show, it, it wasn't the start that they would have hoped for, Brian. They would two losses to, to kick off the campaign. That's tough. It is. and I think we're, you know, I, I think it's quite obvious that they're, at the moment, there's two tiers to this women's TikTok Six mm -hmm. Nations, um, that France and England and Wales are doing their level best to try and creep into that triumphant um, and the reality is that Ireland, Scotland and, and Italy right now certainly on the two games we've seen are going to be battling it out in the, in the second tier is it a massive shock that there's professional contracts in the three, the three you know, first tier uh, nations and then none in the others like it all kind of makes sense time, effort, energy yeah. um, put into um, into your trade is going to um, it's going to reap dividends in the end. And um, <clears throat> I spoke to Lindsay Pete about this. I, I know the route to professionalism isn't on the horizon yet, but I think there's got to be a big focus um, on development, on, on building a bigger squad to choose from, of building more competition, of building grassroots, bring, bringing through young players, aspirational, that now have an opportunity and fe feel as though they've got a route towards being internationals. They don't fall and, and you know fall by the wayside at a particular age group because there isn't the structure and strategy in place. And these are the important things for future proof in the game, not just for the next three, four, five years, but for 20 years time. Yeah. You've got to think bigger picture. So, um, and, and things will evolve and progress. And as the game grows, you know, other parts of the conversation will, will grow. But, um, you know, England have been outstanding for a couple of years now. Um, they're unbeaten, I don't know in how many games, but it's significant again. And playing the best opposition as well against, you know, the New Zealand in November. Um, and and the two of them, them and France, are tipped as, as very likely, you know, World Cup winners or finalists. So I think we have to, at the moment, grade ourselves against the other teams and try and pick up victories and get confidence built that way. And then we can slow, you, can, you, you know, we can't expect... No, it's extremely know, tough because it's it's amateur versus semi-professional, professional. You know, we don't want to harp on about this every single time we talk about it, but it, it really is, you know, it, it is the point of all of this. Like, France, to for Ireland to go up against them, 40 points to five, you know, it really does sort of speak for itself. You know, these girls are out training and know each other five, six nights a week. And then you have Ireland that just get together for this mm. short period of time. It's extremely difficult. Yeah, there's, there'll, there'll still be aspects of 
the performance that will annoy the, you know our girls in that you know there's unforced errors, there's drop balls, you know the first kick off, you know very fortunate not to um, not to have a knock on. I don't know how it wasn't a, ju- a judge to not go forward. It's those things, those moments that they're just you know individual, a little bit of concentration, maybe a little bit of nervousness thrown in there. Those sort of things are you would hope pretty easy fixes and and when all of those when you take all of those out of a performance they all add up towards momentum and confidence and building towards you know setting up opportunities for you or not giving opportunities to the opposition so there's other things there was um was it the second try um Dorothy Wall got held in on a scrum. Just yeah. small little savvy things. The That's talent kind of, is all there. It's the, just yeah, in it small, small things. The small little things of, of, of just a, a bit difference. of know-how, yeah. you know? And all of a sudden, you know, certainly teams like France in particular at home, you know, you get off to three or four quick scores and I'd be, we've all been there. Mm-hmm. It can be it can be hard to hang in there. The Eve Higgins, no try, you know, in the you know that would have put them in the lead and gotten, Big time. gotten confidence going. Yeah. It wasn't a try, you know, it was a penalty. So those small moments, if you can just eradicate the errors to give yourself a chance, because they created chances, they did did did. do it. It's just a matter of not giving as as much scope to the opposition. And uh, I think the next time you play against France, it's not necessarily thinking you're going to go and beat them, turn the deficit from 40 points but they've learned to a, a lot victory. And, yeah, and the but try and reduce that and, so and get it better. closer exactly yeah. and there was some really good you know components to the to the game in the second half and like i said they created chances there was some offloading there was tip-ons there was you know Eve's try was you know great footwork and mm-hmm. nice timing of the pass from Cronin so all of that stuff there you you, you got to hang your hat on the positives on the good stuff as well but um if you can take away the easier errors or those that maybe you'll kick yourself for it just gives you a chance to stay in the fight a bit longer that's it yeah there was a lot of positives in that second half and Fiona I suppose just a few of the the errors that Brian sort of spoke about there there was 27 handling errors you know they, they gave away a series of possessions at the line out and then France were just totally dominant really in the scrum as well yeah, the set piece is, is definitely something that's really kind of came to light. I know Brian spoke about that Wales game. I think it was something like 59 or whatever kgs between the two packs. Um, and we saw that. But but they really, really need to work on this set piece going into this Italian game. You know, um, a lot of people probably don't know this, but the Italians would have an exceptionally uh, strong scrum in women's rugby as well. They had 100% in the last uh, success rate in the last Six Nations. So it's an area of the game, you know, you had... I think it's something that probably would have disappointed Greg and, and the coaching staff as well. There was 28 missed tackles. So, you know, the handling errors, the missed tackles, set piece, although you it might bring you to the level at the minute to, to beat the likes of France and England, if you can fix a few a few of those things, be it getting a little bit deeper in attack or even some of those handling errors were just uncharacteristic of, of, of some of the girls. So it's about maybe calm and nerves, getting them into that game. That, that gives you um, a good kind of platform to build a performance off as they said it might not be a win but they have to they have to look at their own game now that's kind of the stage where we're at when we're when we're going to play those two big nations it's kind of focusing on your own game and seeing if you can come out of that relatively happy they would have been really disappointed with their own game in France but I think it's it's um it's a chance now against Italy to fix it, definitely. And it's funny, you were talking about Dorothy Wall, myself and uh, Jenny Murphy were in the studio and we were talking about that. And we were saying the French girl's arm would be black and blue <laughs> if she absolutely tried to hold you into that scrum. You know, I played uh, when I was about 20 kg later, I played a bit of back row and it, they're just little things they learn. And, and Dorothy will see that and she'll say like, you know, you can't have that. Nicola Friday will learn that she needs to bring that to the attention of the referee, maybe in of talking about different areas so it's all the smarts and that comes with international rugby and and they'll learn it every game they'll take that information in and greg is definitely building something yeah there's loads of learnings to take into this italy game and we're all excited to to see what they can do otb the six nations show it's with thanks to vodafone proudly supporting the irish women's rugby team we all belong to the team of us and fiona you had the tough job to pick the six nations team of the week can you take us through your team yeah, that's no problem. So I went with a loose head prop uh, from France, Coca Lindelof. Uh, we have the hooker, Laure Toye from France. Um, I went with Sarah Byrne 
from England. Uh, in uh, second row, uh, I have Sam Monaghan from Ireland, obviously, and M. Wazel. Um, back row of Alex Matthews from England, um, Hermé from France at seven, and then eight was a really tough one, but I went with C. and Li Lily Crap from Wales. Uh, nine was another one. I went with Natasha Hunt from England, uh, Zoe Harrison from England. Two of them prayed up really well at nine ten. Uh, Lawrence at eleven. Um, our very own Eve Higgins at twelve for Ireland. Um, Gabrielle Vernier from France, the other centre. Uh, Lydia Thompson for her hat trick uh, for England, and finally Shona Campbell from Scotland at fullback. Well, a really strong team. And just before we actually came on air, we mentioned Sam Monaghan. Um, I actually played football with her for quite a number of years before she moved on to rugby. She's just really exceptional and just slotted right in there in this team. She looks like a great find. You know, I, I, I um, obviously it was the first time that I'd seen her play um, against against Wales and some of those offloads. You know, that gets people out of their seats. You know, <laughs> so, uh, genuinely, if Sonny Bill yeah. Williams threw those offloads, <laughs> people there. You know, are cutting it together and and you know, waxing lyrically about how brilliant uh, he was. I, I just what I liked as well, and there was a couple of them as well in the French game, but once or twice where she looked for the pass and it wasn't on, and she tooked and and recycled possession. She had it's the just, confidence. It's the, yeah, it's the understanding mm -hmm. of when to throw them, because you can all anyone can be that loose offloader. But again, it's those turnovers. Yeah, then you're disjointed in from attack into defence transition, and you just put your foot on the uh, your team on the back foot. Whereas, understanding when they're on, when you can throw them, and you know, big success in in a couple of instances against Wales, again against France. But I I, I almost enjoy the tucked ones as well when they realise you know the brain is working over in overdrive. This isn't you know this is just, these are hundreds of a second decision as yeah. well. You know, split second decision. Okay, that's not good. Let's go that's one more side. Yeah, yeah, let's go one more um, phase of possession and see what we can create thereafter. Because in all likelihood, there's going to be a turnover of some sort, or I'm going to make it difficult for the recipient to catch it, or my my support player is not in the position to be able to receive it, or it's in it's stuck in my arm in a particular way, and I can't get full traction on the ball to get it, you know, out of the contact the way I want. All those small little details are happening in microseconds so mm -hmm. um, I, I liked I, I've liked what I've seen so far and obviously she's you know physical throws her you know her size around so yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing more of her yeah big time and Fiona would you have three main performers that if you had to pick out of that 15 um, yeah I thought uh, Natasha Hunt uh, uh, for scrum half for, from England you know she hadn't played um, for a year there was kind of issues with her um, where she kind of left the team and uh, you know England obviously are so strong that they were able to fill the gap Leanne Riley came into that and it was her first start since she came back from the sevens and I thought she was absolutely outstanding she controlled the game it was like she was never away from an England shirt at 15th level so I thought she was brilliant um, look Look, seeing Lily Crap at eight for me was was really really good as well. You know, you have um, you have like a lot of you Poppy Cleal at eight for England, and you had I think um, I think there was a couple others. The Scottish eight as well got a player of the round, but she was just so good. Like she was everywhere. Her, her team obviously had had a big show up. You know, they they won. She twelve carries I think in the game and eighteen tackles. So her work rate was absolutely through the roof. So she was someone that I thought played really well. And we we have to mention Eve Higgins. Her footwork, you know, at twelve, her footwork in a game. She's so so good in a in a game where you know Ireland probably didn't have it. They had possession, but we didn't see it get out to the backs, uh, you know, enough. But I also taught her defensive work. We know what she can do on the ball. I think she's head of line breaks in uh, the the TikTok six nation uh, nations uh, or sorry defenders beaten at the minute. So she's a she's a very special player that you know has I spotted a couple of years back playing ten with Railway Union, and she's just really progressed and she was absolutely outstanding. Yeah, her footwork was something else. And was there any close calls in there? Anyone you would have liked to, to fit in if you could? I thought Linda uh, De Jong had a, a good a good game, but unfortunately, uh, I'm a lover of the set piece. And if your scrum is going back at the rate of knots, I couldn't I couldn't get her in that uh, lineup. But I thought around the pitch, she carried a lot of ball. She was really really good, you know. So so that was someone. And 
uh, you know, and obviously I had said uh, Jade Congill for, for Scotland at number eight. She was absolutely immense for Scotland. But unfortunately, she just had that knock on, which is a killer because she was so, so good for the whole game. When uh, Scotland were attacking in the last play, she knocked it on at the, at the back of the rook, which in turn was a uh, game over. So I'd say she was really disappointed, but her game in general was outstanding. Yeah, it's a tough job you have, Fiona. So I don't envy you. <laughs> Uh, just a reminder as well to keep an eye on Wednesday Night Rugby each week where we're giving away tickets to every home game for the Women's Six Nations with thanks to Vodafone proudly supporting the Irish women's rugby team. We all belong to the team of us. We're going to look ahead now to the Italy game this weekend at home in Musgrave Park in Cork. Kickoff there is at 5pm. In your experience, Brian, coming off the back of two losses, how do the girls pick themselves up now and just concentrate on looking ahead to Italy now and getting this first win? Well, I think a big part of it is about understanding where you went wrong and where you can improve. And like I said, I think the expectations for the Six Nations weren't necessarily high. They felt that maybe they could get um, three home victories. Um, they've obviously lost one of those games now. So it's a, I think it's less about the the uh, result and the outcome and more about the performance and, and, and consistency of performance going forward. Um, there's a couple of areas, obviously, that, you know, that many um, knock-ons or turnovers, you know, you got to cut that, try and cut it by half, certainly um, by a third. Um, you're going to be in the in the game an awful lot more. Get your set piece sorted. You know, the scrum, as we've seen over the last number of years in big games, it becomes such a, an important aspect of the game still um, to have at least at least get parity in the scrum. Because the reality is if you're turning the ball over a lot or you're making, you know, you're, you're being forced into you know, making a lot of knock ons, then the next thing is scrum. You give away a penalty and it's 40 or 50 yards down the pitch or you're giving kicks at goal to keep the scoreboard ticking over so it can really penalise teams if they don't get their set piece right. Um, so, you know, the Six Nations is about momentum and obviously they don't have momentum in their side. So I, I think what they have to do now is solely focus on how they feel that they can improve in the next game and um, obviously focus a little bit on the Italians, but definitely put time and effort into themselves and just changing or, or turning around things 10 or 20% improvement game on game. And that's the focus and then see what comes of that. Not get hung up on, on you know what, what's going to happen at the end of the tournament. They can't control that now. So the next 80 minutes is what their focus is. And... You, you know, I've used it a good bit. We used to have a phrase with Joe Schmidt where rather than, you know, one 80-minute performance, it was 81-minute performances and just trying to win the moment. Win every time you had to do something, be it tackle, kick, um, pass, you know, catch. It, it's just get your um, moments um, and in the ledger in a, in a positive way. For. So get your moment right. Yeah. And because each it, you can't, gets... I can't control anyone else. So yeah. if you... We, there's... You know, the there's got to be a focus on your own job and you have to have hope and confidence in everybody else that they can do theirs. But the reality is if, if each person just focuses on themselves and gets their game right, all of those parts will come together for a better performance. So, um, yeah, you know, it's Nicola Friday's job to try and make sure everything's you know, pulled together. But ultimately, she's got to start that by her own performance, too. So it, even as captain and leader, you, you still need to be able to lead by the way you play. There's nothing like, you know, what you what you do on the pitch to lead by example. You can say all the words you want, but they can be hollow if you don't follow it up with with proper actions. So everybody can lead, be a leader next time. That was one of the other things I said to him is, don't wait for leadership to come from somebody else. Be that leader yourself. You don't have to be vocal. You don't have to be loud. You don't have to communicate massively, but you can lead by your performance. And that, you know, will bring people along with you. So um, that, you know, that is their sole focus. It's not about what co what's coming down the line and the nervousness around what England might come with or Scotland, you know, later on. It's, it's about Italy and about just trying to put together a more impressive performance than they've seen so far. Yeah, absolutely. It's concentrating on themselves and, and working on those learnings. Fiona, for you then, I suppose, what progression do you hope to see this weekend? 
Yeah, uh, I said it earlier. Obviously, we're we're not going to delve into a set piece, but like the twenty eight missed tackles um, is is probably a, a progression I'd like to see better because I was actually very impressed with their defence um, in the in the Wales game. I thought they folded really well. I thought their scramble defence was excellent, and I, I and obviously I, they didn't bite on that ball as much as I'd like them to. But they have a chance against Italy. So with this Italian team, they they overplay. They go really wide. You know, they're they're very very deep so if Ireland can get their defence and make those first time tackles I think they'll put this Italian team under a lot of pressure so so although there are a few areas to focus I would imagine Greg will definitely be looking at that um, defence area because that's that's where you'll take Italy down they, they really really love that offload game so the tackles have to be on the money And do you think they can do it this weekend Fiona? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I always, I, I thought they could do it against France. No, no. Look, I, I, I think, um, I think that they're they had a really good first half against Wales. Um, the the France game, we we're probably never going to look at it. I thought the performance might have been better, but they're at home. They're playing an Italian team. They're building something. And um, Brian spoke about it being in that camp. I'm getting those same vibes off all the players. They're they're delighted to be there. There's there's a new page, Roby. They're not happy with their performance last week. The coaches staff, I was talking to Briggsy, they're just not happy. So so I think if they if they can keep those positive positive vibes, clean up a few things, it should be a win for for Ireland. Yeah, just speaking on that, um, head coach Greg McWilliams, he spoke after the France game and he said that there is more to come from this Irish side. He just hopes that people out there will stay patient because you have to be very proud of the girls and their efforts and that's all that he can ask for as a coach. And I, I just thought that was really fitting that, you know, the Irish public watching on, like, we have to stay patient and understand that it's a, it's a progress. Yeah, and listen, anyone that's paid any attention whatsoever in the last while has realised how far... We had regressed from, a, you know, from a setup point of view and a, and, a, and a structural point of view and a focus point of view. So, you know, we've got to draw a line in the sand from that and start building. And yeah, Rome isn't built in a day. Um, you know, are you going to be um, happy with those performances and results? No, you can't be because you're in the wrong game if if you're okay with you know being on the receiving end of 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 a thumping I, I was there many many times and you've got to get that to fuel your performance to fuel your ambition and desire and make sure that the next time you get the opportunity if you're one of the lucky ones to be selected in that 23 against Italy that you you do the jersey justice and you do yourself justice and you're representing your club and your family along with yourself so there's a lot of pride to be had in um, in, in playing for your national team and um Irrespective of your circumstances, I, I think you always have to feel as though you know you don't know how many you'll have. You don't this know how many, how many games you'll get. Because one day, they don't come back thereafter. It doesn't happen. You don't get selected, and that's the end. And you just don't know when that time is. So you have to enjoy it and try and feel as though you've added big value to the team. And if you can kind of look yourself in the mirror and feel as though you've given everything you can give, well then. That's that's good enough for any team and any coach and any um, nation. And we're building. You know, I think you just have to have patience. Like Greg says, this is going to take some time. So stay with the team and stay positive. And you know, we're we're obviously going to try and be as positive as we can. We'll critique where it needs to be and where they'll improve, where they need to improve, and where they'll get better. But um, yeah, we'll um, we're building slowly. Yeah, and it's great to see we had the game in the RDS. We're in Cork now this weekend and then we're going to be in Belfast. Fiona, it's great. I'm sure you're delighted to have a game in Cork. You know, all the fans up there, the young girls and boys will be able to get out to the games and sometimes when it's up in Dublin all the time, they can't do that. No, and they can't bring busloads. Um, there's a, an, an ex-international kind of group, an ex-Bose group, and one of, one of the women is bringing 58 young girls from Kenturk up to the game. Fair play to her with, yeah. a few, uh, with a few volunteers. So, no, it's really good. It's it's about getting the game out there. It's about make, making it visible. You want these young girls to stay in the game, you know, and I think by moving around and the kids going up watching, I, I, I've seen even stuff in the last few months with, with little girls from Belvo and, and other places, um, you know, like, 
like writing about their idol, Brittany Hogan or or whoever is is Lindsay Pete or whoever was playing at the time. And I, and I think that's it. It's about visibility because I remember growing up, there wasn't very many female athletes that I knew. You know, I loved Jason McAteer and, and or whoever was was when Ireland were winning. So it's it's good that it that they're out there and the change in the venues is is really good and it gets um it gets the likes of Munster and Ulster as well to become involved in that and make and put on a show when when it comes to town. Yeah, it's 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 over to Cork as as the real capital is not what they call to see whether they whether they can beat the six thousand uh, record uh, crowd uh, last weekend. So let's see what you've got. There's lots of chat from you. Can you deliver? <laughs> no <it>. pressure. <laughs> well, this is it. Like twelve thousand fans in attendance last weekend. As you said, Brian, six th- over six thousand in the RDS and. Just as you were saying there, Fiona, like when I was growing up, I didn't have any role models that were women within sport. And just for these young girls now to be able to see this and they're mentioning the likes of Lindsay P, you know, it is amazing. Just women's sport as a as a whole in Ireland at the minute, Brian, do you, do you see the growth? Yeah, it's, it's getting there. It is getting there. And I think, you know, the, um, you know, the 20, 2020 uh, campaign was brilliant um, in highlighting what we need to you know improve on. I think you know, growing up for for me as a teenager, it was it was Sonia Sullivan, and that was kind of really it. But it's not even necessarily just you know specifically around rugby. We're we're talking about rugby here now, but this is about role models in general. I I don't know is my daughter ever going to play rugby, but that's not the point. It's about seeing Irish women doing things at a national and or at an international level, and. It could be in any sport. It could be in football. It can be boxing. It can be, you know, obviously not Gaelic football. It could be rugby. Um, you know, it, it can be whatever you want to be that, you know, from an international perspective. But if they see it en masse, they're far more, far more inclined to um, to feel as though they, that could be them. Mm-hmm. Where, where you see a multitude of different sports and, and different people starring in, you in different it, sports, then. then all of a sudden it beca- it builds. Yeah, It's absolutely. not just a one-off or it's not, you know, a couple of things. Oh, yeah, kind of sporadically you see it. Where it becomes every day, I think, you know, then all of a sudden it, it the subconscious kind of goes, oh, right, this is now, this is... You know, this is attainable. This is achievable, and I think it's just constant reinforcement. And it's, it's taken a long time, and I think it's everyone's responsibility to get behind it. Yeah, it's definitely taken taken a while, but I definitely feel the buzz. And Fiona, you actually teach kids as well, so I'm guessing for you, do you, do you feel that they're seeing it now and they're believing like this is achievable? Yeah, well, I'm a, I'm a youth worker down in Cork, um, up in the Glen, so uh, it's soccer territory, so they're they're not too interested in what anyone does with a rugby ball. I don't think they even know that I played rugby. But definitely, like, just um, coaching under-18s with Munster, you know, they, they're all talk about uh, Munster senior players or Irish players. Never would have heard that before. And and they're going back to their clubs saying, oh, I met so-and-so at training, you know. So so it's really good, and it's that visibility. But it's, it's also, like, the players, Players are getting out there and making themselves visible and making themselves known to, to to younger players and telling them that there's a path and and to be fair the IRFU are providing that path now and it's it, it's it's really visible and AIL we see it advertise a lot more energy I've got behind that so so I think it's it's slowly getting there I've definitely seen it not unfortunately not down in Cork where I am but it's it, it's it's definitely around the place and and it's a great buzz. Yeah, it, it's great to see. And we did hear some sad news through the week as well, Brian. Um, Tom Smith, former Scotland and British and Lions prop, he passed away um, sadly at the age of 50. He made 61 appearances for Scotland, six for the Lions. And you would have played alongside him, Brian. Yeah, I did back in 2001. Um, super nice guy, um, silent assassin. Um, you know, very rarely spoke, but had a great energy and, a, and enthusiasm to him. Um, kind of dry sense of humour. Um, I saw him, geez, before probably before COVID. Now um, there was a testimonial for him because um, obviously he knew that it was terminal his illness, but it was pretty courageous. I think they didn't give him very long back in 2019 when it was diagnosed stage four colon cancer. So uh, it kind of typified 
him as a person kind of courageous and the strength that he showed to be able to battle his illness um, with with kind of the dignity that he showed um, it was really kind of the hallmarks that made him a terrific rugby player and uh, yeah big loss to the game 50 years of age um, so yeah I, th- I think I always in, in these moments thought specifically to his wife and, and you know still young young family Yeah, it's incredibly sad. Condolences to his family and friends, as you said. I'm sure he's going to be in everybody's mind um, through all the games this weekend. Unfortunately, that's all we've got time for today. My thanks to Fiona Hayes and Brian O'Driscoll for joining me on the Six Nations show. And we wish Ireland the very best of luck this weekend against Italy. The Women's Six Nations show on OTB Sports. In association with Vodafone. Proudly supporting the Irish women's rugby team. We all belong to the team of us.